Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Frequent viewers of this show know that there are two things that make me go full on social media influencer. Rack synthesizers and romplers. Today we are going to talk about the Orbit 1990. This 1996, well, Rack synth and rompler was Emu's attempt to infuse the already slightly dated late 80s Proteus technology with a timeless sounds of mid-90s rave. I love having hyper-specialized instruments like the Orbit on the show, not only because they offer a glimpse into the zeitgeist of an era, but most importantly they give me an excuse to terrorize you with a potpourri of questionable 90s techno. At the first glance the Orbit is ticking all the boxes. 24 karat gold front plate, tasteful artwork and a UI that reeks of menu diving. Speaking of olfactory adventures, this unit not only came with an empty battery and suspicious residue on the display cover, but also has a very peculiar smell. I spoke to renowned synth maintenance experts and they have their theories. The Orbit is a rompler through and through. The 32 voice synth engine is based on 8 megabytes of unalterable samples. Quite a few of these tones don't need further tweaking to make sense musically. Leads, pads, basses, noisy structures, and weird vocal samples are only the beginning, and Emu threw in a few very 90s drum hits. However, the machine is more than just a simple sample player. The aforementioned tones, but most importantly the large variety of basic waveforms can be tweaked with a deep synth engine. Two of these samples, so-called instruments, form a preset. Instruments of a preset have a factory amp envelope assigned to them that can be overridden and substituted with a fully tweakable 5 stage envelope plus delay stage. You can change starting point and direction of the sample playback. The per instrument Z plane filter boasts a total of 17 filter types, including classic low pass, band pass, high pass varieties. Wow filters and modulation FX like the bed phaser. Both LFOs and the auxiliary envelope are freely assignable and can be used to modulate the filter. All these synth elements can be applied to both the primary and secondary instrument of a preset. Every preset comes with a versatile modulation matrix that accepts, for example, velocity, mono and poly aftertouch and up to four globally defined MIDI controllers as an input source. Per preset velocity curves, sophisticated layer switches, crossfades between instruments and up to four linked presets, no problem. You can route every preset to one of, hell yeah, three stereo outputs. As we are talking about outputs and worship of non-godly creatures, the sub-outs can be used as inserts which lets you integrate all kinds of external FX without having to use a mixing console or audio interface. 
I'm unironically impressed. Orbit is 16 voice multi timbral, and although presets can be recalled using program changes, I didn't find a way to store an entire performance setup. Filters aside, a minimalist chorus is the only onboard FX. <laughs> Beat mode is a steaming pile of pre-programmed beats that can be crudely transposed and changed in tempo. Emu released a range of rack units that are technically similar. They only differ in sample set and paint job and I need to get them all. There's a dedicated MIDI controller, OG orbits like this one can be upgraded to version 2 with a set of EPROMs you can find on eBay for 30 bucks which results in a higher memory slot count and an enhanced beat mode. Version 3 is an entirely different beast. I assume orbits that go for that kind of money are less smelly than mine. The orbit is chock full of what used to be the hottest sounds in dance music over 25 years ago. Can an instrument like this age well? You have already heard the orbit in today's intro tune. This is very digital, very 90s and I totally like it. Time to use it as a self-contained techno workhorse in this Rec Rompler solo. <laughs> That's a more than acceptable vintage donk. Some compromise had to be made when it came to squeezing all the sounds into the tiny ROM, but the artifact fit the genre nicely. However, I'm not a big fan of the drums, and the samples are in desperate need of some reverb and delay. Let's see if we can find a solution for that. The discrete output and multi-timbrality are ideal for a classic mixing console based workflow and it's easy to make up for some of the unit's shortcomings with EQ and FX. I wanna know if we can push it even further with the power of the DAW in this late space age for nostalgia house groove. <laughs> I think it has become obvious that I really like the Orbit. There is a nice balance between ready-to-use samples and programmability. The workflow, while not always convenient, is easy to understand and the instrument comes with plenty of pro features. All that being said, it is not the most hands-on synth and if you're not a fan of grainy lo-fi 90s dance sounds, using the Orbit might be the next best thing to be in questioned by police in a foreign language. The library the story of the orbit might get a bit repetitive, but you can easily bang out an entire album by just using the presets, which, at least in the 90s, earned you enough money to buy even more Romplers. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.